How you doing, everybody? And uh, welcome to Hawaiian Shirt Friday, our first official one. The one we did last week, it was a Friday, so obviously I'm going to wear a Hawaiian shirt. But it wasn't really a Hawaiian Shirt Friday, it was more like, hey, welcome to season two. Um, with that being said, what a great first week we had. Um, as I mentioned, we did have some format changes. Uh, we did do things a little differently. Um, and as a result, we had a microphone. Huh? Anyway, as some of you may have noticed, uh, during the uh, first week, we're on a bit of a learning curve. Um, and, and the sound, and, and we're trying to get everything balanced. Now, Brandy and I, uh, we're pretty good at uh, social media, we're pretty good at marketing, we're pretty good with trees and plants, not so good with audio. Um, but if we've made one thing clear during this show, and I hope we have, it's that you don't have to be good at something to try. Huh? Do it because you want to do it. Yeah. If you start something for the first time and you're an expert at it, hats off, kudos to you. The vast majority of us have to learn. And uh, I've never done anything like this before. Uh, you see me on CTV, I'm obviously not in charge of the mic. Uh, that camera guy and Lane, they know everything that's going on. Big shout out to Lane. Hi Lane, love working with you. Um, but they set me up. I, I do nothing. I just stand there and answer questions that Lane might ask or that we think uh, the CTV viewers are interested in. So, you know, this, this really ties into our show. Don't be afraid to try new things. If it doesn't work the first time, try something different. Try it. Ask questions. Um, work with somebody else. Play around with it. Have fun. So that's what we're doing. So hopefully, uh, if, if it's not this one, if it's not next week, within the upcoming weeks, we'll get all this figured out. One thing I can promise you is we're going to keep trying, uh, and it's not going to slow us down. So, uh, we had an amazing first week back. We really did. Um, a lot of fun. Uh, as you saw uh, yesterday, we got to go on site and uh, plant a tree for our lucky winner, Pascal. And I hope you saw a few things when we were planting the tree about um, the soil that comes out and how to mix the soil. And most importantly, how much water, when I say the water, uh, you know, it's not just, and done. You really want to water, you really want to saturate, especially, especially those new plantings. And we asked Pascal, and she was sweet enough to send us a picture uh, and let us use it. And, I mean, look at that. Absolutely like if you are not that happy with a new tree, get out of here. Right? This is everybody's reaction to a new tree should be that. That is unbelievably sweet. Uh, it absolutely made my day. Things like this make it all worthwhile um, doing that kind of thing. And that was a spruce tree. Yeah, it was prickly. I got a couple of scratches and scrapes. Those smiles, 10 out of 10. Literally made my day. So thank you for sending this in, Pascal. Um, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. You're going to enjoy it for years to come. Um, and we'll talk in the spring, and we'll, we'll, we'll go over what we said about what a tree needs in the spring. Uh, I want to give a big shout out um, today as well uh, to me and Jenny. It's our second, fifth anniversary. Uh, and the reason we have two anniversaries is when we actually got married the first time. Um, I may or may not have forgotten the actual wedding license. Um, so we went to Canmore, and I met the, uh, the person um, doing it, and she said, I need the license, and I said, oh, it's in my closet at home. Uh, so we couldn't actually legally get married that day. So two weeks later, we had to go back to Canmore uh, and sign the papers. So Jenny had two weeks to really make up her mind. She had a two-week warranty. Uh, she didn't make any returns. So this is our second, fifth anniversary. Love you, honey. Uh, thank you for everything. Um, so we asked uh, this week, we, 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 we talked about trees. That's why I drew my trees, like my, uh, my, like my autumn colors. Huh? Huh? 
I'm good. Um, and we asked what, uh, what people's uh, favorite trees were, uh, some examples. So me personally, um, I love the larch, I love the English oak, uh, I love the Japanese maple, um, oh my god, the list could just go on and on. It really, you ask me about a tree, ginkgo, love ginkgo, uh, there's so many. And, and examples we got were, and I gotta read them because I couldn't remember them all, uh, we got maple, variegated maple, Swedish columnar aspen, amazing tree if you've got a small backyard, you want some height, um, and you want some uh, privacy, can't go wrong with that one. Uh, we got birch, ginkgos, lilacs, ponderosa pines. <laughs> I'm going to edit this. Somebody said, darn it, all of them. You're entirely right. Uh, sour cherry, a choke cherry, but somebody said, I don't like the suckers uh, and the urban black knot. Dip, any kind of pitted fruit tree. Apples, cherries, plums, anything like that. Prune, really late fall, early winter, and you're going to avoid that sucker growth. Um, you'll seriously curtail it. When you're pruning in the summer and the spring, you're going to encourage a ton of sucker growth. As for urban black knot, not a lot you can do. Maintain the health of your tree. Lots of watering, lots of fertilizer, lots of amendments. If the tree is really healthy, it's got a much better chance um, of resisting that bacteria getting in. If it's really bad, you can cut it off, but often you see it in urban trees because they don't really get a lot of care. Uh, they're kind of beat up, noise pollution, air pollution, um, you know, the, the watering situation may not be good. They might be root bound, so they're more susceptible, just like us. You maintain a good, healthy immune system, you've got a better chance of fighting it off. Um, we had another larch. Larches are popular, especially this time of year. Amelia, it will be fun to ask this question again um, in the spring and see if people's answers were different. Um, I wonder if they would be. Um, also, McDonald999 said, good to see you back. Thank you, McDonald. Uh, 999, Vicky Ann, we missed you. We missed you too. Um, now, somebody asked, when we talked about trees, uh, back on Tuesday, uh, and we were talking about uh, trees through the season. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, uh, Brandy can zoom in, a few years ago in September in uh, Calgary, we had what we called Snowmageddon. And it was a day much like this, uh, and then the next day we got a snowstorm that normally uh, we get in December, January. We didn't get much more snow than one of them, no more, no less. Uh, the temperatures were only maybe minus 5, minus 10 in the wind kind of thing. But, and, and by the way, I'm really sorry if that's your car. I, I'm talking about trees, but come on. Um, I'm really sorry if that's your car or if that happened to your car. So somebody asked, you know, why do we not get damage like that? when we get the exact same snowstorm in uh, November, December, January. And the reason, there's two reasons primarily. And the first one is, like I said, the prior day had been nice and warm. Um, yeah, a fall day, but it, it certainly wasn't anything cold, anything like that. Um, and the temperature didn't really get that cold. So those trees didn't freeze. They, they still got sap in them the branches were still bouncy. So you take something and you freeze it and it becomes rock hard, like unstable. But a tree in the summer is all like all hippy dippy. You like my investment tree, winter tree, Arr! summer tree. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a laugh duck, that's legitimately brandy laughing at me. Um, so the tree didn't have that frozen structured rigidity to be able to, to, to hold on to the weight of the snow um, and the ice that was built up on it. And then the other factor is primarily the amount of damage on the trees. Again, if you look at the picture, you can see that that's a deciduous tree, as in a leaf, not a needle. And all of those leaves, again, November, December, January, etc. there's no leaves on the trees, okay? 
every one of those leaves, you pick up a leaf that weighs nothing, but you pick up 10,000 of them, there's some weight to it. You ever rake leaves in the fall off your lawn and they're wet, you put them in a garbage bag, you lift that long garbage bag, you're like, oh my god, that's got, that's got weight to it. Or you put them in the compost bin, you try and wheel your bin, same idea. You think one leaf is not that much, but then all of those leaves, all of the snow stuck to them as well. All of that added weight, plus the snow on the branch, plus the wind, and those branches came down hard. So that was the difference between the two. Um, like I said, we've had an amazing first week back. We're, we're super excited. This upcoming week, we're going to talk more about leaves. We're going to talk about uh, doing a garden cleanup. What you need to do to get ready for the fall, I know we've still got weeks of, of the nice weather and whatnot, but we know it's coming. So let's do a little bit of uh, you know preparation. Let's learn a little bit about what to expect and get on that. So kicking off next week is all about how to uh, prepare your garden for the autumn, for the fall, and what you need to do, and a few tips and a few ideas. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, everybody. Be safe, um, and we'll talk to you all soon. Bye, everyone.